I'm Lisa Curcio, and I'd love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is August 22nd. The year is 2022, and we are streaming live right here on YouTube. Whether this is your first time visiting my channel or you're coming back, I'm thrilled that you are here. And buckle in, because I have a really exquisite Christmas card to teach you with a fun fold design that has an accordion folded gate entry. I know you're probably thinking that's a lot. It is, but I'm going to teach you an easy way to put it together. I'm going to give you lots of tips along the way. Now, in addition to the Christmas card, I have several other cards to share with you and a bonus project for tonight's live stream, because I always try to practice before I'm here live with you tonight. Now, I want to make sure that you are well aware of the free project sheet that I provide. You'll find it down in the video description below when tonight's live stream is over. That project sheet includes multiple pictures, the cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for not just the card I demonstrated, but for all the cards I'm going to share aside from the bonus project. That's just here for the live stream. And I would love to chat with you as well as tonight's moderator. We'll talk about her in just a minute. But in order to chat or comment here on YouTube, they require you to log into your YouTube account, which uses your Gmail address. So please go ahead and log in now so that we can chat with you. And then talking about moderating, I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Gina curcio Holly. If you are here for the live chat, Gina's name will be in blue off to the side. She is the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio and an avid stamper. She has been stamping with me the entire just close to 24 years now that I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She is more than capable of answering your questions and providing you with links for tonight's project as well as other products you may have questions about. Okay, I think we're ready. Make sure you hang with me. I've got lots of tips for tonight. Let's go over to the table. All right, let's move those buttons out of the way and I'm gonna bring in my trimmer. The paper trimmer with Stampin' Up! is a longtime favorite of mine for many, many reasons. And to go over that very quickly, because there's both a scoring and a cutting blade. They navigate up and they navigate down out of the way, which means you can leave them on the track at the exact same time. That clear cutting guide is just a huge bonus, and you'll see why tonight. We do have an extendable arm as well. Now, please keep in mind that all the cutting dimensions are going to be in that free project sheet. I am using cherry cobbler cardstock tonight to coordinate with my Christmas card. Remember, I have several other samples that are not Christmas, so you'll want to hang with me. This is cut four and a quarter by nine and a half. And I want to start by doing the scoring first. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my trimmer and we're going to do some very simple score lines. We're going to make the first one at one inch. Now I can hold it here at the one inch mark and then close the door, but you're going to see because of how nice and wide this guide is that there's very little to hold. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but there's measurements on this side as well, which means you can actually hold more paper and score the one inch here. There's no right or wrong way. I just want to make sure that you know that's a huge bonus of this project. In order to keep this as easy as possible for you, let's go in just one direction. I'm aligning it up here to that straight edge and I'm going right at the one inch mark and then we are going to score. Now the next mark is at two inches and I'm gonna hold that here against the top and we'll do two inches. Now I'm gonna open up that extendable arm, big bonus for this trimmer. And we are going to slide over now to seven and a half inches. And then I'm going to line that up. And again, we're going to score. And then at eight and a half inches, this is symmetrical, which means it's the same on both sides. So if you wanted to do one and two and then flip your paper and do one and two, you absolutely can. But I get lots of questions about this trimmer and I wanted to make sure I showed to you what a big bonus it is. All right, so we have this so far. And while my cutter does both things, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip right over to the cutting dimensions on this next. So I'm going to turn this now. So this is the four and a quarter inch. I am going to line this up so that this edge is at the half inch mark here on my trimmer. Again, that gives me more to hold on this side. Now, because I know you're probably gonna have a tough time seeing this, I'm gonna bring in my little silver colored pencil here and I'm gonna make a couple little marks here. The first one is gonna be right here on that crease line. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this first crease line. So these are the crease lines that are out to each of the sides. 
When I turn that paper, again, that's the four and a quarter, against the ledge here at the top, we are gonna cut from the top down to that very first line. So we're cutting down a half of an inch. So I'm gonna bring my trimming blade up to here. I'm gonna do my best to keep my head out of your camera view and I'm gonna slice down to the half inch mark. Now, because it's already lined up, let's see if I can get this in your camera view. Do you see how it's already aligned here? Well, this is the beauty of that clear cutting track because I'm gonna be able to move my blade exactly to where I see that crease line. I know you can't see it, but there's a little marker here on the blade and I'm gonna cut here as well. Now that's it for the cutting. Now we are gonna do some more scoring because there are other pieces to this card, none of which are hard. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna do with our scissors. Now, if you're very proficient with your trimmer, go for it. But I'll be honest with you, um, I'd like to think I'm pretty decent with the trimmer, but I find this is easier with my scissors. I'm gonna make a mark so you can actually see it. This now is the next score line that we originally made. So here and here. What I wanna do is I actually wanna cut on an angle from here to here. To be quite honest with you, it's just easier with my scissors because it's just a small margin. So I'm gonna bring in my paper snips. I'm gonna line up that corner right there to that cut line. So we've got our angle. And now on this side, I find it's easier for me if I turn it over because I, if I cut away from me, I can see where I'm going. You're just gonna do what works best for you, but this works best for me. Now these are scraps, we're gonna to toss those away. And that now gives us this. Now I know that I've marked this one up because you're gonna to need to be able to see it. But hang with me because we have a little bit more scoring to do. I'm gonna move now over to a couple pieces of cardstock. Now you're gonna need two of them and they are identical. They're three inch by three and one eighths of an inch, which means there's just a smidgen of a difference. And to make tonight's live stream really easy, I actually am actually giving you one here that's written on so that you can see it. Before you do the scoring, because I've made this mistake, make sure that the three inch is really the three inch and it's not the three and an eighth. So with the three inch at the top, we're gonna to do two simple score lines at one inch, so I'm gonna go ahead and line it up so we got the one inch, and then at two inch, very simple. You're gonna do this for both of them, okay? Now, I do have two others here that are not all marred up, but I wanted to make sure that you could actually see those dimensions, all right? So I'm gonna put those off to the side. Those are gonna be what I call the mechanisms. Now, we're ready to do some assembly. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you think it looks done, it's not. So this is the one that I marked up. And then before you join me, I made one other one that was a little pretty without the pencil marks, okay? I do find I'm able to erase this, but just to make it nice, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. We're gonna start by creasing. So this inside score line, do you see it here? Is going to be what we call a valley fold, which means it goes in. The same is gonna go on this side. Here, we have another score line, and that's gonna be what we call a mountain fold. So here's part of the accordion, but believe it or not, we're not done. We are going to extend this. One of those mechanisms is going to come into play. It is going to extend the card. So it's going to get adhered here. Now you're gonna notice that this is slightly shorter than the actual piece that's here. And I did that on purpose. Now I wanna give a huge shout out right now to Heidi Smith from the UK. I saw her make this card. It was in centimeters. And of course she did have some inches, but I tweaked them all just to make them a little bit better for myself. So the, your project sheet's going to reflect my directions. All right, so let's go ahead and let's bring this in. I want you to see that these score lines are all here. Okay, you want them vertical. In essence, what we're going to do is we're going to extend this panel and we're going to adhere this to this area. You want to put the adhesive on the actual mechanism. Now I've got my Stampin' CO Plus. It's very, very strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add that here and that margin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that panel by adding this here. You're gonna to want to align the bottom as even as you can and don't come too, too close to that score line because obviously that's going to have to bend. Now that we've done that on that side, we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So this is your valley fold, this is your mountain fold. I will reinforce these score lines, but I wanna get past these assembly steps first. 
Here is the other mechanism. As I said, we'll have two of these. Again, I'm just gonna kind of crinkle this so you can kind of see where we're going. This is gonna go here, adhesive on the mechanism. So I'm gonna flip that over. And once again, I'm gonna add my stamp and seal plus to the back side. This now is going to mirror the bottom here and I'm looking to get it close, but not overlap that crease line here in the center. All right, and then once I'm happy with that, we'll press that in place. All right, so far so good, but guess what? There's more panels and they're not hard, really easy, but this is what's going to make this a really exquisite gatefold into an accordion. So let's talk about those pieces next. So I'm gonna put this off to the side for just a moment and let's do our stamping. That's actually, well, you know what? Let's come back to that. Let's go ahead and work on those pieces first. Now you're gonna have two panels that are a little larger and two panels that are a little bit smaller, obviously for both sides of the card. So one of each on each side. These are two and three quarters by three and three quarters, two and a quarter by three and a quarter. I know that's a lot to remember. It's all in your project sheet. I'm gonna start with these first. Now I wanna decorate these before I adhere them or you can decorate them after. So if this is your first time making the card, make the whole thing from scrap cardstock to get a real hang of it and it's not hard, you can do this. And then go ahead and do your panels all at once. Now I just love designer series paper that has sparkle, do you see this? Well, let me show you where this is from. This gorgeous paper comes from a suite of products and the paper is called Lights A Glow. Now, oftentimes in the catalog, it doesn't look as beautiful as it does in person, so I wanna give you a quick look. They all have gold foil accents on them. So here is one, and then we've got some in the greens as well. Look at that, isn't that pretty? And then look at, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. But if it doesn't stop there, we got frames. We have trees, and of course it comes in the cherry cobbler as well, and it also comes in the vanilla. Now all the fronts have the foil accents on them, but here's the best part is the back side, which are not foil prints. And I don't know about you, but I can certainly use that for a birthday card. And there are some really other pretty simple patterns that can be used all year round. Now, when I first got this, I looked at the black pattern and I was like, really? But oh my gosh, I've made some gorgeous cards with this. This paper is stunning. It comes in a pack of six by six, which is great for your card making. And if you're a scrapbooker, great for layers uh, for your photos. So I'm gonna stick that off to the side. I've cut these pieces already. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the smaller one. Let's add our adhesive to what will be our wrong side. Isn't that pretty, that bouquet finish on that paper? I'm gonna turn it horizontally to make it easier for my hand. Oops, you know what? I wanna add another layer because let's play up that pretty metallic. This is where that exquisiteness comes in. Now I know that the foil is super duper shiny and easy to like blind you while we're here in the live stream. So bear with me here. I'm gonna flip that over as well. And let's go ahead and let's add that now to that panel. And there's gonna be a very narrow margin all the way around. Of course, you can do yours differently. Now here is the larger panel. We're gonna add our adhesive to this one as well. And of course, another piece of beautifully blinding gold foil because Christmas cards are all about the bling, aren't they? And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip that over and we're gonna add more adhesive now to the back side. Okay, and then this is gonna go on that larger panel for the card. I already made the other panels for the other side ahead of time because I didn't think you needed to watch me do it redundantly. So we've got two and two. So we're gonna have one for each side. Now, before we put these together, let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna decorate this. Now I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper here. This is just basic white cardstock. And this is where I'm gonna do my stamping. Now for this, I decided to do some snowflakes on this to kind of play up that pattern paper just a little bit. And I decided to do some heat embossing. So in addition to the fun fold, I'm gonna give you some heat embossing tips tonight, as well as how we're going to seal this card and the other card samples I have to share with you. So what we wanna do first before we heat emboss is actually prepare the card surface. And I have to share some products with you that are really, really amazing. 
Now Stampin' Up! came out with an embossing tool accessories kit that I have fallen in love with. You get the embossing powder bag, which better known as an embossing buddy, and this preps the surface for heat embossing. And you might be thinking, well, why do I need that? Because if you're gonna use a detailed image, which is what I'm going to do, you want to repel the powder from the embossing where there is an ink. And this actually helps to do that. Then you're actually going to want a little brush to help get that stray powder back in the bottle so that you do not waste it. And there's a pair of reversible tweezers here for when you have those small projects. Now I'm working on a larger piece of paper tonight. So I've readied that surface and I'm going to bring in my Versamark ink. This is a watermark ink pad, which means you can stamp tone on tone, but it also means it is the ink to use when you're going to add embossing powder. Now, before I get started, I want to make sure that my powder is open and ready to go. So part of that embossing toolkit is this fantastic little tray. Isn't this wonderful to kind of catch all those stray pieces? But I use embossing powder probably to a fault an awful lot. So I use these little containers and I label them for each of the colors. And you'll find these little containers in my craft room favorites. So if you head over to my website and you click on shop, you'll see craft room favorites. And this is one of my very favorite storage containers. Um, this one locks because if you've ever spilled embossing powder, you know what a disaster that is. So I love that it locks in case I get a little fumbled. And to make it easier to apply, I love a plastic spoon. This is just gonna keep my fingers clean. All right, so I'm gonna move those panels out of the way. I've got my paper here, I've got my Versamark ready, and I'm gonna stamp a couple snowflakes. Now let me show you where this is from. This is Joyful Flurry. I think it's overlooked in the brand new mini catalog. I love, love, love the designs and I love the font. But there's a little hidden treasure here because it has coordinating dies. Now I've taken a couple out, but look at this. There are actually some negative dies, which means they will actually pierce the paper here where it's raised so that patterned paper and colored cardstock can kind of show through to create some texture. Really, really, really pretty. All right, so let's go ahead and do our stamping first. I've got everything nearby. My gun is here and it's ready. And you're probably thinking your gun, that would be my heat gun. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna stamp that here. Now, normally I would stamp both of them at the exact same time, but I am working in a tight surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do one at a time just so that we can talk through it. Taking my powder right over the container, I'm working very generously because I know what I don't use can go right back in my container, right? I use that spoon to give that a little bit of a tap so that anything statically charged is going to fall off. Very important, once this is powdered, I'm gonna go ahead and seal that because I have made a mess like you cannot believe before. I brought that heat tool in and I've blown that powder everywhere. Has that ever happened to you? So I'm gonna go ahead and move that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the heat tool. So the Stampin' Up! heat tool is amazing. Just like a blow dryer, you don't wanna cover the vents. You're gonna to wanna to leave that open for ventilation. It has a little retractable stand, which is great for travel. You'll notice that the tip is encased, which means it's going to keep the nozzle on the heat tool hot for some time. It's gonna retain that heat. There are two speeds, a one and a two. Obviously the two is going to be resetting these powders to get them to turn to that foil finish. I love the one if I'm using vellum or I'm just trying to dry something I've watercolored. So I'm gonna turn this on high. It's gonna be loud, but I know you can hear me. And I wanna give you some important tips about heat embossing because we do a lot of that this time of year. Hold the gun close, but I like to keep it moving. The worst thing you can do is try to go all over. What you wanna do is conduct the heat from the tool to the paper. Now, once it starts to get hot, you're gonna notice do you see how it's starting to turn foily? It's gonna to turn to a gold metallic finish. And once the paper gets hot, it's actually gonna conduct the heat as well as the gun is, very quickly spreading it and allowing it to heat set. So once I see it turn, I can actually just keep moving the tool. Can you overheat it? The answer is yes. Believe it or not, you can actually scorch the paper. Now let me set that down really quick and let me show you. Oh, the beauty of embossing powder. If you have overheated it, 
it will actually look embedded into the paper and not raised like it should. And if you don't heat set it properly, if you touch this, the powder will wipe right off and you will need to do it again. So I've gone ahead and I've pulled out the die for that image and I'm gonna add that here. Now I wanna give you a very important die cutting tip. Now, if you're like me and you go to put this on your platform, it never wants to stay where you put it. And that's where this comes in. This is also in my craft room favorites. So over on my website, click on shop and then craft room favorites. Anything that I use with my stamping up products that has helped me to make my life easier, I've got it linked there for you. So you're gonna go ahead and pull a little bit of this off. And then what I like to do is I just like to rip this in half because it's wider than I need. And I am going to literally align this where I want it and I'm gonna tack it down in several places. Now, guess what's gonna happen? I can die cut this and it's going to come out perfectly every single time. So I have that one here and then I have this one here. But let's talk about that tape after you've used it. You can save this. This tape is fantastic and you can actually attach it here or right to your die cutting machine and you can use it over and over again. Oh, I get maybe, oh, about a half a dozen uses before I have to actually throw it away. And it's a great cost saving tip for you because who doesn't want to save money so we can buy more fun stuff, right? All right, so we've got some images here. We're going to go ahead and put that aside. Now, before you join me, I also went ahead and I stamped a greeting on top of here. And this greeting is actually from a different stamp set and it's called Hope and Peace. Isn't this gorgeous for the holidays? So I chose the Merry Christmas and I love this because I think it mixes and matches with our holiday cards beautifully. Now, some of you might be wondering, how did you get those banner tips? So I wanna give you a really quick demonstration. And before I do that, have you ever touched your work surface after you've heat embossed and it's gritty? And we worry about getting that in our ink pads, don't we? So I want to give you another tip. There's two things you need to know. The first is a small piece of Swiffer cloth. This is the exact same thing you use to clean your floors at home that pick up all the lint, the dog hair. It is fantastic for your work surfaces. If you have a lot of debris on there, perhaps you've spilled it. Aside from getting the vacuum cleaner, get yourself a sticky roller. This is fantastic for picking up tiny, tiny pieces of powder, glitter, paper, you name it. Back to our banner. You're gonna start by making a small slit in the center on one end. However deep the slit is how deep the banner tip is going to go. Once the slit has been made, you are gonna come from the outside edge to the top of the slit on both sides and because you've made the slit first, you're gonna have a perfect banner tip every single time. So I did that on both sides of the cardstock before you joined me, which left me this. Now, I do wanna add another piece of paper to the inside of this card because believe it or not, you're gonna actually see some of it from the top. So I've got the coordinating cherry cobbler cardstock, I'm sorry, ink pad here that matches the cardstock. And I love Stampin' Up's color coordination. So the ink matches the cardstock that matches our alcohol-based markers and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp that right here in the middle. Lots of firm, even pressure. I've got my Stampin' Scrub to clean my stamps right off camera. This piece is going to get adhered as well to a piece of gold because you can't have too much bling, right? And then we're going to assemble all the panels so you can see how this fun fold card comes together. Once my ink is dry, we're gonna go ahead and flip that over. I'm gonna add some adhesive to my four corners and along the edge. For those of you that like to use liquid glue, please keep in mind that when you're using foil, you wanna be very, very careful because it will mar the foil if you have to reposition it. I've been told, and I haven't tried this, that a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip will actually take it off. You guys are wonderful. My YouTube viewers always give me the best advice. All right, so let's come back over here to the card base itself. You'll see that we have this piece here. These were some of the marks that I made for you. I'm gonna go ahead and just use my eraser just to make it not so obtrusive. And let's go ahead and let's put this together. Now, you know what? I had the one with the little ledges I already put on it. Here it is. Let's do that. All right, this is the one we just put together in the beginning. So many pieces on my craft table. Anybody else with me? All right, so we have two here and we have two here. Let's talk about where these are gonna go. This is really important. 
Intuitively, you're going to want to build this way. This card doesn't work in that direction. This card is going to work this way. So again, with my pencil, I am going to show you what we're going to do. You are going to put one here and it's going to go this way. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add adhesive here and we're going to add this panel. So let's go ahead and let's add our adhesive right over that area I marked. That's just going to make it easy for you to follow at home. And then this panel is going to go here. I am looking to align at the bottom and not too close to that crease line because obviously we need that to fold. So let me get my old eyes in there. Let's see if I can get that lined up. This then is going to eventually come in and get folded. Did I just put this in the wrong place? I keep thinking to myself, Lisa, did you do this wrong? No, I didn't. I folded it right. This is the accordion. Do you see it? This area here is going to be the next one and it's also going to go in. I find that if you crease it and mark it, if this is brand new to you, it's going to be super, super easy. So, so far we've got this. Now that I have it marked, make it easy for you to follow. Let's go ahead and let's add our adhesive to this panel as well. You can leave it open but don't adhere here. You need to adhere so that it goes towards the center. So not on the outside, but on the inside. So I'm looking to align the outside edge and the bottom the best that I can, and we're going to adhere that in place. Do you see it? Okay, we're not done yet. We're gonna come over to this side and we are going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to adhere it here to the inside, adhere it here to the inside. I'm going to place my adhesive here and then we're going to take our large panel because this is going to become mirrored in a few minutes and then we're going to align the inside and the top. Leave a little room for that crease so that this is going to fold. All right, so we've got our X panel here and then this panel is now going to be the last one. It's really just a matter of putting the panels in the right position. It's not difficult at all. The first time you make this, you're gonna be like, I've got it. And of course you do, it's not hard. Again, aligning here and the bottom the best that I can. And we're gonna press these all in place. Do you remember the piece that we created for the inside of the card? Well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this here. And then we're gonna talk about a really cool closure for this. So I'm gonna flip this upside down I'm going to add my adhesive around the outside edges. And then this now is going to go to the inside of this card. Now, if this is difficult for you to maneuver, remember that these panels fold back. Do you see the inside here? This is going to get aligned, leaving a very small margin. Remember that I said some of this is going to be visible from the front. So I wanted to put this a little bit lower. And the greeting that we made, this is where the fun comes in. Let's flip this over. I'm going to grab some dimensionals. So I'm going to work here and here. I'm very cognizant to make them even so that they will hold up well to the mail. Let's take off that paper backing. And then this now, believe it or not, right across here. This leaves a beautiful statement for the card. Still plenty of areas to sign. Now let's talk about how this closes up. I decided that I wanted to create a closure so everything would come together. Now I did this ahead of time, but I want to show you what I did. I cut a strip of the same color cardstock. This is one inch by 11. And I decided that I wanted to make a belly band. Now I did do this part ahead of time. I embossed little tiny snowflakes from that exact same stamp set here all along the belly band because it's fantastic. You just pour the powder and just keep going on each side. Heat set half of the time if you need to. But if you're like me and you make a belly band, oftentimes when you go to attach it, the cardstock fibers want to break down. So I wanna give you a tip. Very carefully with your bone folder, you're going to curl this gently. You don't wanna break down any of that embossing, but you wanna condition the paper just a little bit so it's got a little bit of curvature to it. Now we're gonna get ready to put this together. This is going to house our focal point. So that of course is our snowflake. On the back side, we are gonna add a little bit of adhesive. Keep in mind your focal point can go on any shape that you're choosing. There's no right or wrong. So circles, labels, whatever you choose. That little snowflake, I'm gonna grab myself a dimensional. Let's go ahead and let's put that here in the center and take off that backing. 
And then I am going to mount this offset here just for some visual interest. And you know I can't help myself, right? So we're gonna bring in a little bit of bling. This is the Brush Metallic Adhesive Backed Dots, which means there's a glue dot on the back. I've got another package, but this is my last gold one for this one. So we're gonna press that right on top of there. That is going to help with our closure. Now, let's put it together. You're not gonna to wanna to miss these other cards. The great thing about this now is that these panels are all going to collapse. Do you see it? So this is where the accordion. So we have Mountain Valley Mountain. So this is going to come in. I'm gonna take my bone folder down inside of here and I'm gonna reinforce everything that I did. The reason I'm doing that now versus in the beginning is I found it easier for me to work with this flat to get all my pieces on. So we're gonna do the exact same thing now on this side. So I'm gonna fold this up. I'm turning it to make it easy for my hand. And we're gonna go here and here. And we're just gonna reinforce all those little crease lines because we want to be able to allow our sender to display this. Isn't this great? All right, here we go for the envelope. It's gonna collapse. And yes, it's going to fit in a standard A2 envelope. I made sure of that. You're going to place the belly band around the outside of the card. You're looking here and here, and I'm gonna tell you right now, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because you're not gonna see it when we're done. You are gently going to crease this end. You do not wanna make this tight. Otherwise, they're gonna struggle getting the belly band on and off. Once you have it where you want it, put a little crease mark there with your fingers, easiest way possible. Then I'm gonna come in with my adhesive and I'm gonna put a little adhesive on this end and I'm gonna take my focal point, whatever that's going to be, because this is going to hide all the ugly inside. And I'm gonna place that here. So I'm gonna adhere that here to the center. Now I'm gonna place a little bit here. And again, you can put your silicone craft sheet underneath here if you wanted to. And I'm gonna shimmy this down a little bit because I want all my panels to look purposeful. And again, looking to where those crease lines are, I'm gonna press that in place as well. Oh my goodness, is this not Gorgeous. Would this not even be a beautiful wedding invitation as well? I'm going to give that a good push. So when they receive it, the belly band will come off. The panel accordions will open and it's going to be on display. Absolutely stunning. And of course, you know, they're probably not going to put it all back together. But if they want to, they easily can do that with the belly band if you don't make it too tight. Now, I've got several other samples to share with you. Let me move this out of the way so that I can show you. This next one actually happens to be a Halloween sample. So for those of you that are enjoying Halloween cards for friends and family, this one is using the Bewitching Bundle. So this is the stamp set. It actually has the Builder Hat Punch that did this. So again, here's my accordion. And I use that glitter washi tape. Isn't that fun? So fun. Now this one, I did not even bother to opt with a belly band because I just didn't want it because I know it's gonna fit in the envelope and then when it comes out of the envelope, it's gonna do that little pop-up thing, which means it's gonna be easy for them to display. So we've got that one. This one has absolutely nothing to do with a holiday, but I want to show you the versatility. This uses the celebration product called Wonderful World. Now with a $100 product order before shipping and tax, you can get this designer series paper and the stamp set absolutely free. And I'm paging through here. Here it is. Absolutely free with any $100 order before shipping and tax. This does not do it justice. Will you please look at this? These images stamp as if it, they were real. The paper is gorgeous. And then this one opens up. So I made mine a birthday card, but of course it can be anything that you want. All right. So this is the third one. Now I told you there was also a bonus for tonight. And this is the one I made earlier today when I was practicing this fun fold. I wanted to make sure that I could articulate the instructions to you. Isn't this beautiful? Now, let me show you where this comes from. This is the Bows of Holly designer series paper, and it's in the mini catalog. But the stamp set that I used here in the center has actually been around for some time. It's called Christmas Season and Christmas to Remember. And guess what? There are dies. So I used those to actually kind of make the accoutrements here on the front of this card. Isn't this pretty? And I'm just going to go ahead and remove this so that you can see the inside. And then once again, we've got our accordion panels here. 
just beautiful and there is no limit to what you can create with this. Do me a favor, leave me a comment right now letting me know which one is your favorite. I would absolutely love to know. Remember, you're going to want the project sheet because it's got all the cutting dimensions and supplies. You've got tonight's video, which is being recorded for a replay. You can come back and make your own. Before you go, I need you to do me a couple things. I want to give you an important date that I don't want you to forget. First and foremost, head over to lisastampstudio.com. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see the word subscribe. Click on that and I'll include you in my free weekly e-newsletter where you're going to get a free PDF tutorial not shared on any of my other platforms. It's no frills and I would love to include you, so please sign up there. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, a thumbs up here on YouTube is an immense help for me and I would appreciate that. And of course, sharing the video with your friends or pinning it to your Pinterest board. And mark your calendar because next Monday is a big day. Gina is going to be live with me right here in the studio. That is Monday, August 29th. We have a fun fold card for you. Well, we don't have one, we have six, all using the exact same fun fold, but wait till you see the variety of really fun things that you can do with it. Now, this is the time of the live stream that I'm going to stick around with you and do a live Q&A. So if you have questions, I would love to answer them for you. I'll be glancing off here to the monitor. I'll be grabbing my mouse, giving you some time to type in those questions, and I'll be answering for you. The rest of you, I look forward to having you join me on Monday next week when Gina is here, and I appreciate you joining me. All right, let me reach over for that mouse and bringing that in and just seeing if there are questions. I like to answer about five so I don't keep you too long. Um, oh, you guys are all the wonderful words. Thank you, I appreciate the encouragement so much. All right, just waiting for those questions to pop up there because I know there's a delay between when I speak and when you hear it and when you type and I actually see it. While we're waiting, I do want to remind you of this, this little adorable pen. Oh, this is probably not a really good way to show you, so let me kind of turn the camera down really quick. Gina designed this. Oh, let me move this out. There we go. Focus. It's called Creativity Takes Courage. She designed it and we had these made. If you are interested in these, they are for sale. And Gina will probably drop you in there uh, a link here in the live chat. So I'm going to come back here to the screen. Um, why is Christmas my favorite holiday? Gina has asked this question. You know, Aside from the religious reason, because it's when we celebrate the birth of Christ, I love being with family and friends, and I love having that time of year where we can all be together to not only enjoy each other's company, but to have family traditions. The music, the movies, the popcorn, the hot cocoa. I'm a big, big fan, but that's definitely my favorite, favorite holiday. Thanks for asking that, Gina. Um, Lisa, do you know the date of the next retreat with Bruno and his wife? Absolutely. I am so glad you asked, Donna Pate. You are going to want to mark your calendars for the online stamping retreat. The first retreat was a huge success and you've asked us to come back. It is going to be in the U.S. on Saturday, September 24th. In Australia and other countries, of course, we have a time zone converter. Um, it'll be on the 25th of September. But we will be live streaming for a considerable amount of time, and you are not going to want to miss it. All the information will be over on our website and, of course, in our newsletter. And here, as we get closer, registration opens on September 1st. It's going to be the best $45 you spend for a ton of live demonstrations and a massive PDF tutorial with over 32 project ideas for you. All right, I can take two more questions. I am just scrolling and seeing, did you, okay. So Bonnie asked a good question. Did you use Seal or Seal Plus on your cards? I am a Seal Plus fan because I like the tabs that it comes out in. I find I can just use a smidgen and a little tiny area. Gina is a Seal fan. So there really is no right or wrong way. I love the Seal Plus because it's a lot stronger. That's a great question. Thanks, Bonnie. All right, any other questions? I can do a couple more. Um, okay, Duska said, what is the easiest way to put the stickers on the rubber stamps? I'm looking to see, oh, you're in luck. I've got a piece on here that I can actually demonstrate for you. All right, let me turn that camera down. All right, and let me move this out of the way. I gotta make a little room here, hold on. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you. 
There's that cute little pin. All right, so let me go ahead and mount an image here. Let me see which one isn't mounted. Okay, these words aren't. So this is a cling mount stamp. I keep the frame and I'll tell you why. When I'm stamping with friends, I find that if there's one missing, I need to go on a hunt for it. That means it's not in the stamp case. That's always a panic. These are the two that I use today. You're gonna take the paper backing off of the stamp and that reveals a cling kind of surface here. But the real magic comes in with the coordinating stamp. So I'm gonna pull off this. You'll see that it's perforated here on the paper backing. So I'm gonna take off the paper backing on this. I am gonna tell you that if I have a massive stamp, I only take off half of that paper at a time because otherwise I'm fighting a huge sticky mess. So what I'm gonna do is I literally work as close as I possibly can to this so that I can mirror it. This is not repositionable. So if you attempt to put this down and pull it back up, it's going to rip just like that, okay? The sticky fingers trying to keep my head out of your camera view. So I'm looking to align the edges all the way around here. And then once it's tacked down, I'm just gonna give it a little push. You're gonna get both the stamp and the sticker at the same time. I find these are so sticky that I take them to my blue jeans, which you can't see, just to get a little bit of lint on there because I don't want it to stick too much, especially when I put it back in the box. There you go, and you're ready to go. Then when I'm ready to put this away, I'm able to put it right back here in the stamp case. All right, hopefully that answers your question. Um, that was an, actually a very, very good one. All right, I am so glad that you guys have joined me tonight and thank you for sticking around for the live q and I look forward to having you all join Gina and I on Monday. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Bye-bye.